Welcome to a very Halloween episode of Minorities Report. <laughs> I was scared. Um, I'm your host, Antonio Alcazar, with the other host. Jason, a.k.a. Tech Guard Studio. And uh, we're bringing to you a very special Halloween episode. A Halloween seasonal episode. Exactly, yeah. We're going to try to do a couple of these this season. I refuse to extend the season as far as Hollow Green would want you to do it. Hollow Green is a new holiday that was kickstarted last year <laughs> by myself. Nobody fucking helped me with the Kickstarter. <laughs> that should have uh, told you something. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Everybody's rejoicing in it now. You should check out Hollow Green on uh, Facebook. It's just a fun thing. Basically, it's a new thing that I started doing because I fucking hate Christmas. Yeah. And the fact that Christmas is two months. Yeah. Whereas Halloween's a much better holiday. <laughs> yeah. I now start celebrating Hollow, uh, Hollow Green the Tuesday after Memorial Day. All right. Or Labor Day. Labor Day. Sorry. So, uh, yeah, maybe maybe next year we'll extend the Halloween episodes as far as Hollow Green. You, you know, we're going to do some other horror, though, for different seasonal times of year, though. Because there's horror that's, that's fit well for the winter and stuff like that. We'll kind of talk about that a, a bit. Sure. Uh, just... We're trying to do some movies that fit into seasonal time periods, yeah. too, and whatnot when we so, do this. Probably uh, all of October we'll be doing Halloween. Though. Yeah. And then we got, like, uh, we're looking at, like, you know, Christmas movies around Christmas yeah. and stuff. Christmas classics and things like that. You know? So today we're going to be uh, reviewing Nightmare on Elm Street. A Nightmare on Elm Street. 1984. The first one of the Freddy Krueger movies. Hell yeah. Uh, all right, man. Well, let's get into it. What'd you think? Okay, so uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, obviously directed by uh, one of the horror kings, Wes Craven. One of the horror kings? Yeah, definitely. Yikes. Um, he made two of the most uh, important horror movies at, uh, in our history. So, Which ones are the other ones? Uh, one? Scream. Oh. Yeah, he did okay. Scream as well. So he uh, really had a different vision. Uh, very... You know, the funny thing about this is this movie obviously deals with a killer uh, coming to you through your dreams, through your sleep. A lot of different crazy visions and whatnot, killing children. Kind of a cool uh, concept for sure. Yeah, definitely different. Definitely different. And it's funny that this came out right before Stephen King's It. Because oh, really? you can definitely see some similarities between Freddy and Pennywise. I've I've never seen it. Oh, yeah, like the original it or excellent. No, so, but that seems like genuinely scary. Oh wow, is it? All right, so well, well, I mean, we can talk about it later, but sure. it's definitely like a similar style character as Freddy. Uh, it's okay, almost, and it's just complete coincidence that those guys had this had yeah. this stuff at the same time. Like there was so, no cross kind of. No, not at all. So. So, uh, just so everybody's aware, I don't watch scary movies. And I know that that's funny to say because I haven't watched any of these movies, but I specifically stay away from scary movies because I don't like to be scared. And I have, in the past, especially growing up, been scared by scary movies. So, as I grew up, it wasn't one of those things where, like, you just stop getting scared of them. Sure. Because I really do, when I'm watching these movies, I try to engross my... Whenever I watch any movie, I'm trying to put myself in that situation. Of course. And scary movies, the intent is to feel fear. Yeah. And I hate that feeling of feeling fear, especially when it's just kind of lingering, like you're sure. just feeling it throughout the day. I definitely uh, got into horror movies myself at a too young of an age. I uh, When I was a kid, I watched uh, Poltergeist, the okay. original Poltergeist. Yeah. And in that movie, the kid... I've never seen Poltergeist, too. Sure. he gets uh, the, the kid gets kidnapped by ghosts in the house. Yeah. And then it's all about rescuing her from these ghosts in the house and whatnot. So, as a kid, I saw this movie way too young. Okay. okay? Yeah. And it affected me so hard that in my bedroom, basically, me and my brother shared a bedroom. On my side, there were two closets. Yeah. And I slept... Faced away from the closets okay. my entire like yeah. life growing up. Yeah. So much so that it's hard for me today to fall asleep on my left side. Yeah. Much easier for, for me to fall sure. asleep on my right side, yeah. which would be facing away from the yeah. Uh, closets. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, growing up, there were three movies that stand out as the ones that really like did real damaging work on my sure. brain. 
Uh, there was the first one that I watched when I turned 13. On my 13th birthday, I watched uh, The Exorcist, the original Exorcist. Oh, yeah, for sure. And 13-year-old me did not handle that movie well. Okay. Around the same time, I watched The Blair Witch Project. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think I was like 19 when that movie came out. Yeah, so I was like, I must have been like 10 or 11 or something like that. Uh, A little bit older than that. Yeah, because yeah, you're, eight, you're eight years older than yeah. me. So, uh, You'd have been like, uh, what is that, uh, 12, right? No, yeah, for sure. 11, 11, 11 or 12. 11 or Somewhere 12, in there. Yeah, but yep. still, so my experience with the Blair so Witch Project. did you see project, that movie in the theater? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. I saw it, I saw I saw it the year the after when it came out. Got it. So I was at a friend's house, and they were doing like a marathon of that movie on HBO. Yeah. It wasn't a marathon. It's just, you know, how on HBO that you just played the Keep same playing movie. The, Especially yeah, back, back in the, the day. day. Yeah, 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 definitely. And so um, I watched that movie like 10 times in a row sure. one night, and it really fucked yeah, me up. Yeah, that's a fucked up... That, that's definitely a fucked up movie at the time. Like, yeah. at the time when that came out, I remember I went to go see it with my girlfriend, and she could barely watch it. Yeah. I loved it. I, I, well, so, she could barely watch it because of the motion sickness? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Yeah. And uh, I love I love horror movies. Obviously, yeah. like I've grown to enjoy shit. them right quite a bit. Like I regularly watch horror movies all year. It's not just a Halloween yeah. thing yeah. for me. I see tons of them and all kinds of new ones. And I'll see off brand ones on Amazon Prime. All that kind of shit. I sure, love these yeah. horror. It's just even it. the schlocky shit you like. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I watch some shit that's like pretty pretty bad too, you know, yeah. and whatnot. And just because I've tried to find a lot of times, diamonds in the rough sure. will be really good. Ones that you never heard of, like something like The Ritual on that. Uh, I sure. think that's on Netflix, right? Like, I don't know if I would have sought that movie out if I didn't, uh, you know, just come across it. Sure. So, but now I love that. I really, really enjoy that movie. So, similarly, I try, I try different films from all over the place, you know. And I'm not gonna like act like I'm never fearful in a movie sure that's not the case at all i just enjoy that feeling yeah. so you know yeah. i i, search I don't that i hate that right. feeling I oh, the other one by the way is the ring yeah so i watched the ring when i was 16 sure that's when the movie came out uh it was a couple of weeks after it came out nobody wanted to go see the movie with yeah. me and one day i don't know if you remember west point cinema in absolutely Brookfield. so i go see this movie at west point and sure. nobody wanted to go with me so i was just like fuck it i'll see it alone but it was like Two weeks after it came out, so there was nobody in the theater except oh, for like fine. some one other person. Yeah, and so I'm just like watching this movie in the theater by myself. Yeah, that really fucked me up. Yeah, like those three movies, like, and I've seen a bunch of horror movies. I didn't stop watching horror movies completely until I was well into my twenties, but I distinctly remember those three movies being the ones that like I to this day kind of have that those lingering kind of sure. feelings. So, so watching this movie and watching any of the movies that we watch during the season, I'm going into them not super excited. Yeah, a little bit worried. Yeah, okay. especially if it's something that like will rock me. You sure, know, like is sure. I like again full disclosure. There's an open idea for me. I'm open minded to the idea of the uh, supernatural. Extra yeah. Yeah, 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 like I'm not. I don't believe in anything. Uh, fully or even like concretely. Sure. But I'm definitely open to the idea that ghosts and shit exist. Sure, sure. So when I watch stuff like this, it, it just, it like always an, bores into my head. You're like an agnostic person. Yeah, when it comes to ghosts yeah. and spirits yeah. and demons and shit, and like I'm always like, who knows? I know? would say that I'm the same type of way. Yeah. I, I'm the same, I'm in that same vein. But I still watch movies about this shit, you know? So that's, <laughs> yeah. that's kind of weird, you just, you know? You're just, you, you're not a coward. <laughs> right. Well, I don't know if it's that. It's yeah. just, you know, I, I'm, maybe I'm sick, you know, in, in my head, right? Maybe you're, you're sure. the normal yeah. one, right? So, but let's, uh, let's, let's get into Nightmare on Elm Street, yeah. uh, directed by Wes Craven, released 1984. Um, definitely different uh, than a lot of the horror movies that were out at the time. There were a lot of... Uh, Friday the 13th ripoffs. There was a lot of Halloween ripoffs. A lot of just killers like that. Uh, Wes Craven was looking for something. This different. isn't Friday the 13th. No. What's that, Friday the 13th? Jason. Oh, that's Jason. Yeah. This okay. is Friday. Okay. Jason and then Michael Myers is Halloween. It's Leatherface Halloween. is yeah. Texas. All that stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so, the, so Jason and the Friday the 13th came out before this. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I think the original Friday the 13th is 1979. And Halloween was 79, too, right, or something like no, that? No, that was earlier than that. I think Halloween was 77 or 78. Oh, okay. So yeah. this is well after that. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. 
That stuff all came out. Texas Chainsaw Massacre was the 70s as well. Okay. Uh, all these movies were the 70s. And, and those are all pretty slashery. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So I had this discussion once before. Now, you've seen one movie with uh, Freddy. Do you feel as though Freddy is a slasher? Yes. Okay. I don't. Huh. Uh, not that he's not a slasher, but I consider him more a psychological. I feel like this is like a high concept Slasher. slasher film. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I can I can get on board with that. But he's definitely not. But the thing is, you haven't really seen Halloween or Friday the Thirteenth and stuff no. like that. So yeah. as we go through the catalog, I've seen more, a lot of the redos. Like I saw yeah. Halloween, uh, the like the Rob Zombie one. Yeah, that was pretty dog fucking shit. terrible. <laughs> yeah, like, that's not even. Um, yeah. And I've seen. Um, you could have just said Rob Zombie, yeah. and I'd have said dog shit. Yeah, so, that's right. the, those movies are pretty bad. He had some. He had some good music, but he's fucking. Did he have some dark. good music? I, don't I know. mean, I enjoy. It. I like metal, sure. so yeah. you know, okay, it, it's definitely, sure. definitely a lot of metal I enjoy, and I definitely have Rob Zombie songs that I enjoy. So, okay, yeah. yeah. So we go into this. Wes Craven wanted something different. Everybody was doing this, the silent Michael Myers style killer. So he wanted something completely different than that. He wanted a murderer who taunted people and shit of that nature. Okay. Who's playing with them? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because uh, Jason and and uh, and Michael Myers, they're essentially the same character. They're just kind of moving towards. Jason their, is, yeah. is purely a rip off of Michael Myers yeah. for sure. Yeah, and and I, I mean, oh, everything his backstory like fucking, and yeah. shit like that is a little bit different, but yeah, exactly. mildly different. Right, but like the idea of like a dude with a big knife. Right, with a mask on. Yep, yeah. yep, and with a mask on exactly. So. Uh, so the movie starts off and you get a cool kind of scene, in my opinion. Uh, it's like a montage sort of thing of him building his tools and all yes. that stuff. And, and uh, every, every killer has that tool. And uh, Wes Craven wanted a different style of thing. And he yeah. kind of threw out there, what if he just had a handful of razor blades and shit? And so that's where sure. the, the glove comes from. The most shocking part of the beginning to me... Uh -huh. Introducing Johnny Depp. Yeah. Why did they say it like that? Because this was his first movie. Yeah, but like it's a lot. Like actors have their first movies all over the place. They never. Is that like a common practice? Yeah, yeah, yeah for I sure. Like, know, like uh, what was the movie? Introducing Larry Fishburne. That was great. Apocalypse Now. I think that was <laughs> that. Yeah, introducing sure. Larry Fishburne. Yeah. I think it's like, you know, new actors to the business or whatever. You know, maybe sure. they just kind of, kind of, kind of do that. I had never really seen that before in any movie, yeah. but I thought that was funny. You know, yeah, for sure. A for super sure. young Johnny Depp. Absolutely. How old is he? Like twelve? No, no, he wasn't like fifteen no, though. Sixteen? No, no, man. I think so. That thing about like horror movies and shit like that, like it to me is ridiculous that these kids are playing fifteen-year-olds. Which, by the way, there that was there was some problematic shit. In right. This movie. I agree, and like they've. They're clearly in their twenties, you know. Oh, okay. So yeah. uh, there was a scene where the girl, the main character, she's just like, "I look like I'm 20, and I'm like, "Yeah, I wish you were 20." Yeah, she is. This movie, less fucking. Yeah, she's definitely. Well, that's that's all part of the part of the thing here going okay. on. So yeah. you got that, and then you get the you know you get introduced to this like boiler room setting and shit, yeah. and it's very very fucking disturbing. Like like sure. everything in the beginning to me is is kind of set up to disturb you a little bit. Sure, you get. The music is kind of this piano, like, yeah. bow, 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 you know, like thing. You get the kids that are going around. They're singing a song. It's just set up to kind of subconsciously unnerve you a little bit, like what's going on. And you get yeah, like, but I don't. I feel like it's not subconsciously trying to unnerve okay. you because they're. I feel like it's they're playing up that. You know, like it's not even a subconscious. It's like a. It's like a. This is supposed to be scary music. It was. It almost oh. seemed too on the nose. Okay. Uh, but I mean, you know, in 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 the eighties context, who knows? But like nowadays. Yeah, but I mean, like all musical scores. I don't see. I look at all music in films as a subconscious type of thing, because you're not like. I think it should be. Ideally, it's a subconscious. And you're. Thing. I don't think you're ever in a movie going, oh, this music's making me feel this. In right? this it's movie, just I thought you, that. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, and in, in the last movie that we uh, did, um, sure. in Predator, there yeah. was like a couple okay. of scenes where I'm like, they're going a little hammy with this sure, music. Sure. That's why I liked Alien so much and yeah. why I liked Terminator, because the scores were great. You didn't even notice them. Yeah. I mean, like, that's... The, Right, but that's that's the thing is it's like not all movies are going to be that way, right? Not all movies can be masterpieces, right? Sure. We can't compare everything to Alien. This movie, by the way, was not a masterpiece. What? <laughs> yeah, this uh, 
let's get into it. All right, so you get into like you get a, you get a beginning dream kind of thing, and then you get the, your main woman. That's kind of like the start of the of this. Then you get from that, you know, she has a nightmare, and you break out of that nightmare, and then it's like business as usual. You know, sure. we're gonna yeah. introduce all the characters and whatnot. We introduce the your four main characters in yeah. the film. Yeah, yeah. Then you get an insult that was. Uh, straight out of the 80s. Yeah. What was that up, up your... yours with a twirling lawnmower? Yeah. There what a good. fucking insult, bro. <laughs> yeah. That uh, that character was a fucking like clown. Clown, for right. sure. Yeah. I mean, he a was... raper too. Like uh, he was a sexual assaulter. Why? The um, you got so in this in the first scene with the sleepover. Yeah. Where he shows up. Yeah. Uh, you get the sense she didn't. Want that to what? be happening? No, you need to watch the movie again. I literally just watched she like it. talks about how great it was. Yeah, but like she's also really not about it at first. I know that's she's like getting that's, pulled away. And she's just like, hey, can you please not hey, leave me here alone with this guy? That's teenage sex in the eighties, bro. I hate to break it to you, but that's that's sex in the eighties. Unfortunately, uh, it was. It's a, a little dated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean. Uh, so <laughs> they start, also they're all fifteen. So the, yeah, that is that is problematic, obviously. Uh, Especially some other scenes later where you literally see that girl naked. Yeah, they should have definitely been older. They should have said they were seven. I think like going into this movie, I forgot that they were fifteen. I thought they were seventeen. Sure, I thought they were like seniors, yeah. basically becoming. They were seniors. It, like year. that's a common thing, a, a, a teenagers yeah. in these movies. Because yeah. I don't of know. Course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Every eighties eighties horror movie is about. Teenagers. It's always teenagers because that's who you're selling to. Okay, but like that's uh, old adults like us don't get old adults besides you don't get scared <laughs> by these yeah. type of movies. But that's what I'm saying. Like, um, if you're gonna have like hyper sexuality, yeah. Because this this movie, the the main character chick especially, is really hypersexual. Everything is hypersexuality in this film. Yeah, and we'll get into some of that later. Okay, but like I thought that it was pretty. It was a little troublesome that it was a child. I mean, yeah, that's the point of the movie. Yeah, but like they didn't do it. Well, oh, oh, okay. So okay, there are, so there's a couple of scenes where we'll we talk about. Ta- it in the we future. start talking about. They start talking about their dreams. Yeah. And you get like a description of a red and green sweater and some fingernails, and everyone's having the dream, and something's fucking weird with the yeah. dreams. Except whatever. for Johnny Depp, he's not having the dream. No, he's having the dream. He's just not admitting to it. Oh, okay. So yeah, and I know you said you didn't like it. I love the theme song for this, yeah. and the theme song is like kind of like in the background of yeah. all these scenes. And yeah. Like I love the piano keys. You know what I wanted to say? I was like, I get it, dude. I'm watching a horror movie. I get this. I mean, that's all horror movies. <laughs> yep. You know, right. so uh, it's not Blair Witch Project. Not all horror movies. <laughs> that well, that didn't have, have any music, yeah. right? Not all horror movies are the lighthouse, right? Where sure. your music is like a blaring fucking lighthouse yeah. every once in a while. <laughs> every once right? in a while. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So they're getting into teenage life. Yeah. This hurts my uh, suspension of disbelief a little bit. This doesn't feel like 15-year-old stuff. No. This feels like a 17-year-old or an 18-year-old sure. sort of thing. Like, 15 years old feels too young for this film's yeah. scenes. But 18-year-old would have been perfect. I even think 17 would be fine. I'd be fine with a 17-year-old because that's, I mean, the difference between 17 and 18 is so minimal uh, to me. Your sure. senior in high school, I think, is where we should be targeting. Yes. Not sophomore, yeah. is, in my, my opinion, okay? So... Now we start going into the uh, relationship between Nancy and her friend and whatnot, and the, the two uh, couples. Two couples, yeah. right? Yeah. So then they they like because the the two couples split off to go fuck. Yes. Like that's the whole idea. Yeah. And then they're gonna have a sleepover because the main our main character yeah uh, it doesn't want to be left alone. Yeah, for sure. Okay. And then you get the most. See, this is a, again the fact that they're fifteen is is really egregious here because then you get literally. Like '80s porn noises coming from the next room. Yeah, and it's just like yeah, no 15 year olds have ever fucked like that. And even if they are, like this is not a cool thing to be like. No, right? Like, it's glorifying because they're literally glorifying. And here's the thing: they're they don't 
they don't reveal the fact that they're 15 yet. So I wasn't weirded out by this because I was like, oh, yeah, they're 17 or whatever. I, I didn't even think two things of it because sure. I'm like, oh, they're seniors, whatever. Yeah, I had sex yeah. when I was a senior. Not not a big deal or yeah, whatever. Yeah, but like I, thought, but, I thought that they had already mentioned it because no, I remember thinking like it's, this is It's coming weird. up later when they find out when she when the, when the our main character gets killed. Okay. Sure. So And that's when they re- reveal that he, she was 15 years old. Sure. Oh, I'm yeah, like, that's right on the news. Right. And I was just like, yeah. what the fuck? I was yeah. like, that, that totally – that that was just hard for me like it but makes it me also, wonder about West Craven a little well bit, that's but. exactly it it kind of gives you a glimpse as to like the idea of what was acceptable in 1984 so West know? Craven to me besides Scream besides this he also made Last House on the Left I don't know what that is it's a problematic movie oh. about a girl a younger girl getting raped by two dudes uh than the family uh, getting revenge against those people. Okay. I, I I can't remember. Okay, so there was a remake. So this was and just I might kind of like confused. his jam. Yeah, like young sex was kind of his jam. Because even Scream is a lot about a lot. There's a lot of young sex in that too. Yeah. And like, here's the thing. Like, that's what John Hughes movies were kind of about too, though. So like. It, I haven't seen any of those. I don't know if I feel weird about this. I mean, American Pie was all about having sex, right? And it was seventeen. And like, I think like the difference is because it's a comedy. We American Pie was it. also pretty bad, though. Like American Pie, when you because I've seen American Pie. Sure. Uh, it was kind of like I was like a like a, a freshman, or maybe even sure. Right, a little I bit think before. I was like twenty when it came out. So an American Pie, they literally like are jerking off to a girl undressing on cam, watching her without her knowing, and then yeah. she gets, like, suspended or expelled from school. And, like, there's, like, all sorts of very... And, the, and the, like, their main thing is, yeah. uh, like, we need to... Like, we are owed sex. Like, yeah. that, that movie is, like, an incel's fucking dream. Yeah. Because that's bad. Those I are mean, bad things. Yeah. It was comedy in the 2000s. Yeah. I mean, like, listen... You can't. We've we've talked about this a couple of times now on this podcast. You can't really judge past right. things out of context. Yeah. Like like I won't I won't judge something back then, but like those aren't things that we should continue to emulate. Of course, man. I'm not trying to say hey, I'd no, like no, to no, see no. more teen. Uh, clearly, sex. I'm not fucking right. <laughs> accusing uh, you of this. horror movies. I'm just saying like this is like. In, Here's the in thing, these though, days, right? Watching so this shit is a little problematic. My my thing though is. These movies are made for people of this age. Group. Yes. Okay. So but you that's can't why... watch these movies now right. and give yourself an excuse to enjoy it like they would have enjoyed I, it. I do agree with you. But, like, when you look at, like, these movies. Now, I was too young for this movie. But, like, you look, I look at, like, American Pie, which I was. Man, no. I wasn't even 20. I was, I was like, 19 when that came out. I was either 18 or 19 when that movie came out. And, like, that was, like. 18 year olds at that time in, yeah. in the late 90s sure, and shit yeah. like that like you're right like Pre-9-11. that shit is like fucking almost sexual assault nowadays yeah. right you yeah. know so like and rightly so no I agree <laughs> uh, yeah. definitely definitely it's it's like we our discussion about race and shit like that you know yeah. you can't like go you were shit for what you did in 1900 yeah but you don't do that now yeah yeah but also there should be something about like there shouldn't be and uh, again I'm not uh, blaming you of this or accusing you of this, I, you just shouldn't give yourself license to enjoy yeah. something that's egregious just because you know sure. it was a product of its time. Sure, no, 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 no. It's definitely something. Like I said, last house on the left as well in this shit. But so to get back to the movie, everybody's sleeping, and you get the scene of like Freddie like coming through the walls yeah. towards uh, Nancy. Like I loved it. Yeah, I was like, this was, was. Was it Nancy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because okay. Nancy's sleeping in that one room. Who's the other girl? The girl who dies? <sighs> Fuck, I forgot her name now. Okay, but it's not Nancy. No, Nancy. Yeah, Nancy's because the Nancy main girl. becomes our main girl. Yes, for sure. everything is filmed in the beginning to make you think that this first girl is yes. our main girl. Yeah, and then she gets killed. Yeah, and then Nancy is our, actually our main girl yeah. who carries on actually into later movies too. So, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you get that whole scene, and then of course you get. Her friend getting murdered like yeah. a motherfucker. Like and, fucking violently yeah, murdered. Yeah, violently murdered. This is a fucking awesome kill scene to me. Like, Yeah, it was pretty cool. She's like flying up the walls yes. and stuff like that. And There like, was a scene where I even didn't know how they filmed it. Yeah. Or a, a, a move. Yeah. She gets like 
pulled up and she's yeah. kind of floating. Yeah. And then she gets like contorted all sorts right. of crazy. Yeah, yeah. I was like, how did they even do that? Yeah, you know, yeah. That, that it was, seemed, it was pretty cool. It was definitely know. very cool to me. Like, you get this whole thing and then you get like the kids going back to school and stuff like that. And the parents are such 80s parents, dude. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. They're so uh, turnkey parent. Like, yeah. you know, just like yes. kind of out of their kids and just like, eh, I'm above all this and shit like that. Yeah. Like, that was 80s parents to a T, bro. Yeah. Like, I grew up with 80s parents. They were very much like, yeah, yeah, go do your thing or whatever, you know. Sure. We'll see you later <laughs> or whatnot. Yeah. So, so, yeah, that was that was definitely interesting. So, And then she goes back to school and then we start having some really fucked up nightmares. Day nightmares, right? Because she's so afraid to go to sleep because Nancy reveals that her best friend was having these dreams and she was worried about dying and everything else and then it actually happened and she's freaked out by this you know about uh, uh, about this killer in, in your sleep and it gets you thinking like that's fucking frightening because like you can avoid going to crystal lake you don't have sure. to go to crystal lake of course you don't have to party on halloween yeah you can't not sleep sure like that's like Freddie's it's gonna come for you, yeah. Yeah, for sure. like, at some point yeah. you're gonna you're gonna go to sleep, and like there's a there's a scene later that the a doctor says everybody has to dream, which I don't know if that's true. I don't. Think I think everybody dreams. Yeah, you, you don't you, always remember your dream, but right? I, I think you, you do. Dreaming just happens. You do dream, yeah. right? Yeah, ex absolutely. So that's just fucking. You know, he's a he's a that's a frightening thing. So you have the whole body bag scenes and like the and 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 her friend being in the body bag that dream. The whole dream of this is yeah. like. When she's ex in school the next day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's so vivid. And, like, it's freaky to me. Like, I don't know how you sure. felt about it. But, like... I didn't think it was freaky. Okay. So, like, the... I thought it was very it, disturbing, the visuals yeah. of this, of, of her friends. Blood everywhere and being in a body bag. Being, like, around. dragged around. Yeah, exactly. Shit, yeah. Being dragged around. And she kind of runs up, runs out after this or whatnot. And then, like, you get Freddy... Like the first real like visions of Freddy. Sure. And I love Freddy. Really? Yeah. Freddy is actually my favorite uh, horror movie villain. Okay. But like, I love the mannerisms that he has. Yeah. And the way he stands. Oh. And like the way his glove is like too heavy for him. So he like kind of stands with a limp with the yeah. glove and stuff like that. That to me is so intricate. Okay. Because here's the thing. Yeah. So some behind the scenes stuff. Robert England is a fucking psychopath, okay? Like in real life. Yeah. Okay. And I don't mean he's a psycho like he kills people. <laughs> okay. He's like a ridiculous method actor. Uh -huh. If you ever hear him talk about like Freddy Krueger, he talks about like it as if he was an English theater major and this was his grand masterpiece. Yeah. And like how uh, he's like I made sure to stand with slightly more to the right to oh, indicate wow. the fact that Freddy is overweighed by his his hand that ki does the killing wow. and it weighs heavily on him and wow yeah yeah, yeah so he really got into it yeah no he was you don't like, get that well i didn't get that oh you know what i got what this guy's a silly clown i mean like i i thought this is clown shoes <laughs> <laughs> i that's that's mind-blowing to me i like, feel i feel bad now for for robert england yeah because like he really played his heart out yeah. and all i'm doing thinking watching this movie was Wow, this is fucking dog shit. <laughs> oh my goodness! No, man. No. In the first scene, yeah. so we skipped the scene. The very first uh, real Freddy scene yeah. is when he kills that girl. Yeah. Uh, when he's chasing after her in the alley yeah. and his arms get real long. Yeah, yeah. I was laughing out loud. So like, okay, <laughs> I couldn't believe how fucking right funny because that was. like, here's the thing that you're like, I guess this is in my opinion what you're missing. Is like if he was a killer running after you, that would be silly. That would be ridiculous. Like, oh my arms yeah. are elongating. Yeah. It's in your dream. Sure. That's I mean, dream that like all of this is dream logic to I, me. Like I get I get that. Are you sure? It just yeah, I mean, clearly it's dream logic, yeah. but it's yeah. I mean, because it's in dreams. It just I don't know if it's the way it was shot or the way he played the character. Uh, or just how silly the the like the effect looks. Sure, but all of it was coming off as lighthearted to me. Okay. I wasn't. I wasn't feeling. Maybe it was the over the topness of the music. Sure, but it was like I wasn't getting the horror vibe. Oh, okay. I was getting a slasher vibe. Sure, and when you're doing shit this ridiculous in a slasher movie, yeah, 
it's not scary, you know? Okay. I, I, I definitely feel the psychological effects of these these scenes of like these people dealing with their dreams yeah. and this dream logic playing through sure. of like elongated arms and like we're going to get to it in a little bit when she gets away from the police station and she's like trying to run up the steps and the sure. steps are getting all gloopy and yeah, she's like, the marshmallow out. steps right the marshmallow steps yeah. yeah that was that was that was that to me is like just Terrifying. awesome man like <laughs> like the dream sequences to me are what make this movie sure. like so great because okay. it's like the impossible becomes possible because it's in a dream. It's happening. Sure. Okay. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I really, really enjoyed those things. And like to me, the mind blowing thing about it is the fact that the movie was made for two million dollars. The budget for this was two million dollars. And yeah, it's pretty low. And the fact that they're able to pull off these dream sequences, sure, is crazy to me, man. Like I loved it because uh, they're so. 80s realistic. Okay. Uh, they should have, like, like I watched the remake of A Nightmare on Elm Street. I don't know if you ever saw it. With no. uh, the guy from uh, Watchmen, uh, Jackie Earl. Uh, or no. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he played Freddy. Okay. Which, if, I, if you ever said to me, who would you have to play Freddy besides Robert England, which I love Robert England as Freddy, he would be, like, my first pick. Like, sure. oh, yeah, that dude's, that's, that's Freddy. And, like, that movie sucked. Really? And I wanted that movie to be so good of because course, I'm like, yeah, I, I love Freddy. And the thing Freddy does is dream sequences. And now we have great special effects. Okay. The dream sequences should be fucking mind-blowing yeah, amazing. Phenomenal. And they weren't at all. They were just like regular world, but with death and shit. And I'm just yeah. like, fuck, this is worse than Jason versus Freddy, which had much better dream sequences. Sure. I've but, seen Freddy vs. Jason, weirdly. Really? Yeah, weirdly enough, I've seen that movie. Sure, sure. Uh, so, which I thought was, a, like, silly as fuck. Like, that was, like... I mean, that's the point. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But, and, and you, going into this, you had... Because uh, I had uh, mentioned that I thought that this was going to be silly. And you... <laughs> I just noticed your shirt. No, I'm right now wearing uh, Screamworks. Yeah. And I like how you were wearing the Predator shirt when we recorded Predator. Of course. I have a shirt... <laughs> Because you have to remember, I'm from the 80s. Sure. So, like, purchasing things and nostalgia is my thing. So, yeah, I have a shirt for, like, every movie I enjoy. Yeah. No, so I, I remember when I mentioned to you that I thought that this was going to be silly. Because uh, I was actually happy that we weren't going to watch The Exorcist. Because I had already seen it. Sure. You said, oh, you know, just watch out. This is going to be, you know. This is more. Yeah, this isn't going to be as silly as you thought. it is silly. But because the the later movies you said were silly. Yeah. But I thought this was just as silly as those other movies. Oh, like, interesting. Like, to me, it came off as very lighthearted. Okay. Like, like, I, like there was some gruesome shit. Sure. But it, it came off as lighthearted, gruesome shit. Okay, okay. So let me ask you this. At this point, we have the scene with uh, the guy gets killed in the police station. Yeah, the guy gets hanged. Yeah, and yeah. Nancy's dad is actually the police, yeah. you know, the chief of the police the chief, or whatnot. Yeah. The guy also from uh, last uh, Enter the Dragon, of course. You know. I didn't know that. Oh, did you ever see Enter the Dragon? No, I don't know what that. Okay, is. never mind. Uh, sorry. And, and so um, you uh, you now start to have like a mystery of what's going on here. And what did you think of this mystery at this point? Like, what did you think was the behind the scenes of Freddy Krueger? Oh, uh, like... Like, how did he... Because, like, every horror movie... Like, shitty fucking horror movies yes. don't have a backstory to the yeah. killer whatsoever. I hear right? what you're saying. Like, what did you feel about, like, the mystery of this dude's backstory? I... Okay, so did they explain it the, at this point yet? No, not yet. Because at this point, I didn't even realize he was going to have one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't like... I think picking were, up what they were putting down. Right. And right. then suddenly when the mom started going into like this crazy exposition in the cellar, I was like, what the f and then the story that she comes up with, like the story that she tells was bananas. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. like, what in the fuck? Especially because she referred to herself as the parents. Yes. So this like what just happened? So basically the backstory, because this is where we start to get revealed the back. What ends up happening is she has a dream. She rips his hat, hat off. Yeah. She sees that it says Fred Krueger or whatever. Yeah. And then now she knows her mom's lying because the yeah. mom's like, I threw that thing away or whatever. And yeah. then she's like, get fucked. It's right here. Yeah, it's you know? right here. Like, yeah. How fucking asinine was that, too? Like, she hit it right behind her. She's like. In the like, drawer. Right. Yeah. I threw it away. Right <laughs> here it is, mom, you fucking idiot. Like, yeah. right, like. A lot of the scenes were like that, though. Felt like a lot of scenes were like. 
ridiculous. Weird. Yeah. yeah. I, I made a note of, uh, about, like, the... I don't know if it was the acting or sure. the acting direction. Sure. But it was egregious. Yeah. Like, everybody did a, a shit job. Yeah. Like, no, no person was not a clown. Yeah. Every single person was a caricature. Yeah. And that's hard, especially when, like, I enjoyed... The other movies that we've watched so much, you yeah, know, or at, le- at the very least, Alien and Terminator. Yep, yep. Where even when in Terminator, when they were going pretty hammy, yeah, I was like, I'm here for it. Yeah, but in in Predator or in this, I was like, ugh. Well, I mean, in like Terminator or something like that, where we reviewed, your your most of your actors are in their 30s, whereas sure. in most of your actors so, here are in their 20s, right? Well, yeah, I mean, so. except for like the dad and the mom, but even they were doing bad jobs. I thought the dad was okay. The mom was atrocious. Yeah, the mom. But was she's supposed trash. to kind of like play this drunken '80s mom. No, right? I didn't so, even realize that she was supposed to be drunken. Yeah, until deep in the movie where yeah. she was like up just against ridiculously the, <laughs> drunk. Yeah, right? yeah, up against the closet, just drinking out of the bottle. Yeah, yeah, man. So that was yeah. They, I just think that they play '80s, you know, uh, parents. You sure. Know? So I think that's. A, a little bit of the problem with that. And then you, you get the story of Freddy that they... So he was... A child molester. Right. No. He said... They said a child killer. Right. But in the in the uh, description of the movie... Yeah. Uh, like the text description of yeah. the movie, they refer to him as a child molester. So he... Wa- okay. So, 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 some behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. Originally, they wanted him to be a child molester. Oh, okay. Okay. And then it was, that was too graphic for... No, so what ended up happening was Wes Craven at the time, like in 19, the 1983-ish or so, there were a bunch of child molester uh, cases going off in California and shit like that. And Wes Craven didn't want to play off the sensation. They, he didn't want to be labeled as a sensationalist that was... That was, that was profiting off of these different stories and whatnot. So we could talk a little bit behind the scenes of the, how this movie was created, too. In part, this whole movie was based off of some real-life things that happened, people dying in their dreams. So what, what... What? That can't be the case. So people... There were a bunch of people in the late 70s, early 80s, that were fleeing from areas in... Uh, Asian areas, uh, Vietnam, Cambodia, all these areas here that saw like a lot of crazy amounts of war and whatnot from the Vietnam War. They fled to America, got asylum and everything in America. And a bunch of the men actually were dying in their sleep. Like they were sudden deaths. And like these people were like between the age of 19 and like 50. So it wasn't like some old person that just died of natural causes. And they were having like heart attacks and stuff like that in their deaths. And there was even a name for I can't I can't remember the name of it. But basically, Wes Craven was reading about these stories. And this wasn't like a one-time thing. It was a bunch of people that died from this. He was reading about these stories. And between that, those stories and the song, when he was writing this, Dreamweaver was on the radio. And those kind of things together created what we know as, as Freddy. Oh, wow. So so he really did come up with this shit. Yeah. Like, he didn't just kind of plagiarize this. No, like not at all. This was this was completely uh, out of his own own mind, these different things that piece, he yeah. pieced together to create Freddy. In the, in the That's Freddy. interesting. Yeah, I am, uh, I'm going to look into that, like, yeah. dying in your sleep thing, because yeah. there's no way. Yeah, that, no, like, totally, what? totally. And true. Then, then just stopped? Yeah, or, yep. It was these... these just like a handful of people in all yeah. of history? Yeah. Absolutely. I, that's weird. Yeah, I know. It is very weird. So, uh, I mean, who knows? It could have happened from veterans from World War II and stuff like that as sure. well. And we just don't know about it. Yeah, so, you know, yeah. uh, just, you know, people dying, dying young. So then uh, we just start going through the deaths at this point. So, yeah, so yeah. I mean, uh, Johnny Depp gets killed next. And, and that, that scene to me. And to be honest, like, that's a whole lot of movie that just happened. You yeah. Know? Like, but that's, I feel like, one of my big complaints. Sure. A lot of this movie seems inconsequential. Sure. Like, it just kind of happens. Yes, to get to the next death yeah. and stuff like that. And the, and you get little bits of story and stuff like that. And so, like... The mom's extremely ridiculous exposition really, like, threw me off. Christ. Where yeah. she was just like, and then we went to his house and burned it down. Yeah, so, okay, I'm sorry. So we kind of got away from that. So basically, he was a child killer. Sure. Okay, and somebody fucked up on the warrant or some yes. shit like that, and he got away from that. And because he got away... They gave him town justice. Yeah. They fucking murdered his ass. Yeah, yeah. And so I don't remember if it's exactly in this movie, but it definitely gets explained later that he's killing all the kids of the parents oh. who killed him. 
So. Yeah, they didn't go into that. Okay, I'm sorry. That definitely comes up in a, in, in later movies, sure. but basically he's getting revenge against those families yeah. of the people that killed him. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. And the end of this movie was really weird too. Yeah, we'll uh, get we'll, we'll get, we'll get yeah, all that. Sure, yeah. Right. So before that, before yeah, before her boyfriend dies. Oh, the tub scene. We yeah, the tub scene happens. And that then, that was where I was just like, they are really hypersexualizing this kid. Yeah, because I mean, the glove even comes up in between her her, her legs, legs and shit. Yeah, like, I was like, uh, okay. So like, Freddy, like the whole thing is sexual violation and stuff like sure, that. That's yeah. like you know heavily. I mean, that's what the the glove and everything else is very he- heavily sexualized and whatnot. Sure. So um, penetration. I mean, that's what yes. all, all this is is about. So all right. I'm going to put some cards on the table here. We're doing a... This is probably our worst job of covering a a movie so far. Because this movie kind of (laughs) sucks. All right? This is the first time I rewatched a movie that I was like, this movie kind of sucks. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. And and that's unfortunate because, like, I remember really liking this movie and really being scared of this movie. But this is the first time I've watched this movie since I was probably a teenager. Sure. And I'm so used to watching... Uh, Freddy 3, Freddy 4, Freddy 5, okay, yeah. which are the later ones where you, the Dream Warriors and all that stuff. What? And those movies to me are much better than this movie, okay? Sure. Uh, well, it, it's a low bar, man. Right. Like when I was watching this movie, I went into it with the expectation that at the very least it'd be a little freaky. Yeah. And I was just kind of uncomfortable and bored. Yeah. You know, like it was just a dumb kind of movie. Yeah, it was definitely like one of those things. Because, I mean, we're going through the seeds and, and you have you have the mom's bullshit ass reaction. <laughs> yeah. You have a scene where she goes to, she's she's like, okay, my boyfriend's here. Yes. Oh, what a weird movie. I'm going or, to. What a weird scene, I mean. I'm going to go to sleep. I need you to watch over me all night while I sleep. She he falls asleep. She gets pissed at him. I asked you just to watch over me all. What the fuck? When am I gonna sleep? Like yeah. that to me, like that was so unrealistic an expectation of like, hey, stay up all night, teenager, and watch over me. Yeah, and make sure I don't. I'm gonna go to sleep. Yeah, just watch me. Yeah, don't go to sleep. Do not go to sleep. Right. What the fuck are you even yeah. asking? Yeah. So th- I mean, so you have you you have especially go- when at this point. No one believes you. Right. You know? Even the doctor scene, too. Yes. That was super egregious. When yeah. she went to, like, the, the sleep facility, sleep yes. research facility or whatever. Like, those doctors were super unprofessional. As right. Of course, like, man. And they're like, she's dreaming right now. And, oh, my God, I've never seen this. She's yeah. having a nightmare. I'm just like. Yeah. <sighs> Fuck, let's move on. Yeah. So, like, yeah. that's how it felt in a lot of these scenes. There were yeah. some cool visuals. Let me. Sure. Let me just. For the Pull out. Yeah. There were some cool visuals. I thought. I thought the the waterbed death was really cool to me. The waterbed death. Yeah. That he's he's that's Johnny oh, Depp's yes. death. Yeah. And he gets yeah, pulled yeah. through when into the waterbed and the waterbed gets shooting everywhere. Yeah. And like. Was it a, a waterbed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that scene was like really problematic at the time. Like because well, there was like eighteen million gallons. Of yeah, blood. I guess. So yeah. like <laughs> that was a really problematic scene. And yeah. so like. Then I get a scene that I actually enjoyed where she gets the phone call and he's like, I'm your boyfriend now. In the tongue? In the tongue, yeah. Dude, I like, oh, wait, I have an, a specific note about okay. that. I wrote the tongue, the phone tongue thing solidified this movie as clown shoes. Yes. <laughs> That's what I wrote down. For sure, for sure. And then, you know, you get, you get, you're starting to get a little bit more Freddy. You start, now you get the home alone scene, right? Where she's going to set up traps and all this other bullshit to like. She home's alone it. Right. She home home alones it. it. Yep. Exactly. It's funny that we like refer to it as home aloneing. Yeah. Even though home alone came after all these movies, but it's like such like a. a, Home alone thing. Right. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Like that is home aloneing it. You know, like when you set up traps to like defeat a, a superior foe. You are fucking Kevin, and you are in Home Alone. Yeah. So she starts to put her plan into motion, and this end starts to get really fucking silly. Like, yeah. just everything about this end gets really fucking silly. My, like, my note was the suspension of disbelief is impossible in almost every scene. Yes, yes. And, like, she pulls him out, and then he's running around the house, and then there's fire, and then there she he's humping the mom, and, like, you're just like... There's so much happening, dude. Yeah, and I'm just like the door is locked from the outside. So yeah, she can't leave, and she's busting out the windows. And then the, there's the weird cop who's just yeah. like, "I should it's go tell be him." Okay, and it's like, "I should go tell Chief about this." And like, so much of the stuff is just like, dude, 
I hate all of this. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, so then you get like a, you, you get a couple more seeds and basically that's the fucking end. And <laughs> basically that's the fucking they, end. They, 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 she, you get a scene earlier in the movie where Johnny Depp explains how these people get out of nightmares yeah. and then she pulls that off and then that's how she robs him of his power and yeah. then he's diminished. And like the one thing she wakes up. And then the mom is back, and all of the kids and everything's are alive. back to normal. Yeah, which right. I didn't get. Like, did she go back in time, or and like everything's back to normal, and she's back to her normal life, but then she's not and because then, it's and a then, nightmare. Exactly. I don't. I don't. Like, I was so confused. This end fucking sucks. Yeah, dude, I didn't get it. What the fuck? So basically, this whole movie was a nightmare. That's, is that what it was? That, one of the takes of this movie. Yeah, is there's the no whole, consensus, right? Oh, jeez. And Wes Craven has never like fully, of course, revealed Explained exactly it. what okay. it is. You know why? Because he doesn't have an answer, right? He's, exactly. He's just like, yeah, he shit the bed, right? Yeah. And and, I, and it was just like, what the fuck? So is Freddie like, is this the mom's nightmare, or is Nancy still in a nightmare? Is the whole movie a nightmare? Yeah. You know what's a nightmare? This fucking movie, yeah. bro. Like this is. <laughs> yeah. This was okay. Let's just let, everything sucked. Like <laughs> everything I mean, sucked like this fucking movie. <laughs> usually we give like pros and cons. And if I'm going to give any pros, just to just to stay professional here, some of the special effects were really good for 1984, in my opinion, especially on the minuscule budget that they had. The theme of this movie to me is really cool. The the concept of it. The concept of yeah. this film is very cool to me. This this killer coming at you in your sleep, very scary, something you cannot escape. The preying on children and whatnot is sure. is very horrifying. There's a lot of elements of this that, uh, if done right, would be terrifying. Yes, uh, preying on children is is terrifying. Yes, of course. And and There's not nothing... being able to escape it in your fucking dreams and not knowing when you're dreaming that could be terrifying. One of the things that's crazy to me is they, in part, felt that a child molester was even more disgusting to people than a child murderer. You know, like that was one of the one of the other things that was said about why they changed him as well. Sure. And like. That's crazy to me. Like, you know, all of this movie is like, Wes Craven is a complicated fucking dude. Sure. I enjoyed this movie back in the day. I enjoyed Scream back in the day. Looking back, I'm like, was this dude into like kids? Like, yeah. it's very much like a, or, or like maybe he had problems when he was a kid. Sure, yeah. And he just never got over it. And I totally could get that. Uh, I think the design of Freddy is really cool. I love the I love the sweater, the burn uh, look. Yeah, the burn look was cool. The fact that he they, you see him rather than a mask because everybody wore a mask before this. Sure. Uh, the fact that he has a red and green sweater, which is very upsetting to the eyes. That's uh, that's a oh, clashing sure. color. It's very and that was just basically his Christmas sweater that they were just like let's put him in a dirty hobo Christmas sweater and Jesus. that's what they they yeah. used for for the you know to create another sense of like. Yeah. Uh, disturbing. Yeah, yeah. Just an off kilter kind of. Yes, feel. exactly. Yeah. So besides, yeah. I mean, what did, is there? What what did you like about this film? Um, I I don't think I liked anything about this film. Okay. When I was watching the film, I was more I was very turned off to it. Yeah. There was uh, a lot of it just, that was just like uncomfortable. You yeah. know, it was uh, and and on top of uh, the discomfort, just kind of chintzy and silly. Tone I felt like was all over the place because I, I got a really lighthearted tone. A lot of a lot of the jokes and, and acting were lighthearted, and then there would be some incredibly gruesome fucking violence. Yeah. And then the the music was telling me that it was supposed to be this like serious scary film. Yeah. And a lot of what was happening was not serious or scary. Yeah. And so like just the whole time and and on top of that, the story was convoluted as shit. You know, like the premise is convoluted. Yeah. Like I didn't. So I didn't, like the premise, you you're talking about like Freddy's backstory. Not just the Freddy's backstory, but how it all works. You know, like who can see Freddy when they can or can't see Freddy? Because, um, like the scene where the boy, where the boyfriend died. Yeah. I thought that that was happening in a dream, and then it turned out it was happening in real life, and then so the mom saw it. So what actually happens is just to kind of, uh, you know. Oh, the scene where back. she goes to like check on the guy in the jail. Yeah. And she, when she asks uh, Johnny Depp to watch her. Yeah. And he's like behind a tree. Yeah. He's like, hey, I'm here. Yeah. I'm like, okay, so. So she's, she's dreaming at that point. Yeah, she's dreaming yeah. that he's there. She's, that whole scene is a dream. Yeah, but then, like, how would she ask him? 
What do you mean? Like she's asking him and dreaming that he's responding, but she doesn't know that she's that he's responding because she's Her dreaming boyfriend? already. Yeah. Yeah, but like so, there's no That's like what I mean the about problem with this movie, convoluted. right? Is like there's no hard cut. Like this is a dream, right? Like yes. it's very hard to understand what's a dream because that scene too. I was like until. Freddie walked through the bars. I was like, oh, yeah, she's dreaming. Yes. I, for, I, I forgot about that. And, like, of course. And, like, the, so so what actually happens in the deaths, though, just to explain that part, is they're dreaming. They're seeing this thing. Yes. Freddie's killing them in the dream. But what's happening to them is being seen by the people around them. Sure. Okay. okay. So so that's why, like, the blood gets shot out of the thing. Or, like, you see the, the woman flying a, across the thing because he's – in her dream, he's killing her and like and like throwing yeah. her around and stuff like that. He just sees what's actually happening to her in in the yeah what's going on. I think it, what I was kind of feeling was that a more concise or a better director would have made this better. Yeah, like I think part of the problem is I watch a lot of horror movies and I forget there's a lot of shit that's made. But there's a lot of there over the last five to six years, there has been a renaissance in horror and high concept, great at great acting horror. Like things like Hereditary, things like The Lighthouse, The Witch. Yeah, because we saw The Lighthouse. Yes. And when I went to go see The Lighthouse with you, I that was the first horror movie I, or scary movie. Yeah. Horror movie. I had seen in my Many adult years. life. Yeah. You know, like in the last maybe eight years. Yeah. And I was way more uncomfortable in that yeah. movie it, because it was scary. Sure. Like, it unsettled me yes. way more deeply than this did. This, this was, is, like, fucking silly. I agree 100%. This, this, I mean, that movie shames the fuck out of this movie. And maybe it's because... Maybe, like, if I was, like, 16 when I watched this movie for the first time, yeah. like, I would be completely frightened. And, and you know, and if I was... If I was born in 1970, so I was been 14 when this movie would have came out. Sure, maybe I'd have been like, "This is Terrified. the scariest fucking yeah. thing I've ever seen," you know. Yeah. And like, that's a very possible thing, but I just don't know anymore because, like, it will be interesting when we watch Halloween. Okay, sure. Because I think we're gonna feel a lot differently about that movie. Yeah. But I, I'm not 100 percent sure yeah, either yeah. because now this makes me change all my like thought process and whatnot of sure. like what. Because I have not seen these movies in a few years, are these as great as I remember them? You know, I almost kind of want to uh, break tradition a little bit. Maybe sure. we'll do an extra episode okay. this month, and uh, we can just watch one truly horrific movie that you've seen that sure. like you know is gonna fucking rock me to my core, and we'll just watch it just so that I can like experience right. during like on uh, on a podcast episode. Yeah. An, an adult take on a truly unsettling sure. horror movie. Sure. Uh, let me, off the top of my head, uh, have you seen Hereditary? I haven't. Okay. And um, I've heard that it's fucking good. Hereditary is, you know, so Ari Aster, the guy who creates that that stuff, he's got a cult following, of course, now, because, I mean, he, he did do that movie, and that movie, there's, part of the movie is problematic to me, but it is, Phenomenally acted. Sure. Uh, some of the best acting I've ever seen in a horror movie. Yeah. Uh, uh, Tony Collette is in the. Is, she's one of the main characters. She's amazing in the movie. Okay. And I really think that will that'll get you going. Man. Yeah. That's All gonna. Right. Yeah. So well, I'm down. Be, I'm that'll down. That'll be our target. Yeah. So, I hate that I'm down, but I'm yeah, down. Yeah. yeah. Be brave. Yeah, you're gonna be brave. So. <laughs> sure. Yeah. No. That and that's cool. Um. Definitely. So like you know this movie overall I still. This is kind of similar to Predator for me, okay? Uh, I still like Freddy. I still like the sure. idea of Freddy. Yeah. I still like Freddy as as a, as a character, as a horror movie guy. Um, Origins were just not as cool as... No. Yeah. It's the thing is, like, this was not as good as I remember it. And I think I might even like Nightmare on Elm Street 2 better than this. Huh. And Nightmare on Elm Street 2 is very different than this film. Sure. It's very, very different than this film in tone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you would probably think Nightmare on Elm Street two is more disturbing than this movie. Okay, I, yeah. the more the more I am. like the actual uh, like like more of a scary movie. Yeah. yeah, that was the last movie that they took seriously, and okay. then three is when they started going off the walls, campy and stuff bit. like that, right? Because yeah. that's when he was like the MTV Freddy and stuff like that. Gotcha, yeah. uh, this definitely had some silly scenes in it, but nowhere near like. 
now I'm playing with power. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there was none of that. Sure, yeah. There's not. There's no like, uh, you know, where his fingers turned into needles. And, Ooh, suck on me. Welcome to the prime time, bitch. You know, yeah. like that, like Freddie, like one liners and stuff like that. Yeah. Like that's I'm really your, what he's known. Yeah. For, yeah. Right. Because I'm your boyfriend now is probably the most memorable, you know, phrase that he has in yeah. this, in this yeah. one. And that's not. And much. I remember the tongue out of the phone more than I remember the yeah. fucking line. Actually, yeah. it was. Uh, this is disappointing. I got to be honest <laughs> with you. Yeah. I was just disappointed with this overall because I remember really loving this movie. And I'm sorry, you know, if people out there are like, I know I still love this movie. I yeah. just watched it again and it's so fucking good. It also feels weird to like do an episode where we're just shitting on a movie the yeah, whole time. Well, you know? <laughs> because I think even with like our, our lowest rated film so far has been Predator. Yeah. And even with that, there were some redeeming things that, sure. that you enjoyed. Yeah. And I overall enjoyed the movie. But I enjoyed it as an 80s, remember this crazy movie type of thing. Yeah. Rather than it being a great movie. Yeah. This is just, I don't I don't want to remember this anymore. Yeah. Unfortunately, I, I, I don't remember why I love this movie so much. <laughs> sure, yeah. Uh, and that's, that's what's cool about this podcast is being able to go back to these movies. And yeah. that was one of our points to see if they hold up. You sure, know, to, yeah, of course. To, and so. Uh, this one does not. Unfortunately, uh, we've let our. our, our uh, Arrows out of the quiver, but uh, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> would you recommend this movie? Yeah. If somebody was uh, going, oh, I think I might go watch this movie, I will immediately tell him, don't do that. Yeah. it's uh, This the, is not worth it. If you want to see the origins of Freddy Krueger, I don't even know if this is worth watching. For I mean, that. if you're want to, see, if you doing something as specific as, as saying, I want to see the origins of Freddy Krueger, yes. then watch this movie, whatever, watch them all. I think... But if you're thinking, I, I kind of just want to do like a Halloween marathon, sure. don't include this in your marathon. No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think I enjoy it for that. And I think like with Nightmare on Elm Street 1 here, I think they do a better job of explaining his backstory in Nightmare on Elm Street 6, or 5, five 6 it is. And the funny thing is too, Wes Craven did not want to do any more movies after this. He didn't want any more Freddy movies. After the but, first one. Yeah. He was just like, this is it. Sure. It's over with. The whole thing's a nightmare. Whatever, you know, whatever you want to, like, take from it. But that's the end of the movie. There is no Freddy past this. Uh, of course, the studio was like, kid yeah. fucked. We're doing yeah, more Freddy sure. movies. But this you is spent the, $2 million making it? Right. And we made probably $100 million? I think it was $97 million yeah, out. Sure. So that's, like crazy money yeah. right so like there's no way a studio is gonna let you go away with that yeah one. exactly so they 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 of course made more freddy movies they did it without him you know he's a legend in horror yeah and uh, <laughs> you're starting to think why <laughs> yeah you know i'm yeah. starting to be like i like john carpenter much more than i like sure. Wes craven but that's you know john carpenter i love the thing i love halloween and i love uh in the mouth of madness and i love prince of darkness those are all horror movies uh, I've only ever seen Ghosts of Mars, and it was bad. That is way past when you should stop watching John Carpenter. <laughs> John Carpenter's last good movies was in the 80s. Vampires was like 90-something, and yeah. Ghost of Mars was even after that. Yeah. So the last movie he made that was even watchable to me is Escape from L.A., which is 1996, if I remember correctly. Okay. But that was before Vampires as well, which was 98, if I remember correctly. Uh we should definitely, we definitely, on our docket, we definitely have Carpenter movies coming. Sure. Uh, the thing is definitely something we're going to do. We ha we have two more. Later in the year, we're going to have two horror movies we get to. Yeah. But it's going to be during winter. Okay. Because they're winter horror movies. It's going to be The Thing and The Shining, which okay. are both set in in winter I've never situation. wanted to watch The Shining. Some about Kubrick movies that just, like, he puts too much thought into it, and it makes me uncomfortable how much thought he puts yeah. into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, The Shining is is phenomenal, and there's no way I'm gonna feel about that movie like I feel about this yeah. because I've watched The Shining recently sure. in a theater even, and I fucking loved it again. Really? Like I, oh yeah. my god, I love that movie. Huh, so, interesting. And the thing is, is by most people I know, like their favorite sci-fi horror slash horror movie. Oh, like no a way. lot of people I know love that. I don't movie. know anything about the thing, just vaguely that it's like in Antarctica or some shit, yep. and it's like about an alien. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like that's 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 his. And that's only because I've played the Thing board game. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> so There's, it's funny. Carpenter is definitely a cult classic kind of guy. I mean, I would love to at some point do Big Trouble in Little China. Sure. I would love to do Escape from New York. The, Those are uh, all Carpenter movies. Yeah, these are all Carpenter movies. Oh, okay. He's probably my second favorite director. Sure. 
Okay. Behind Scorsese, okay. although I really like Tarantino no too. Yeah, really? I love Carpenter. Your second favorite director. I'm trying to think, like, I just love so many of his movies. I'm not saying that they're like the best movies yeah, made, but they're just like your favorites. They're my favorites that yeah. I I can watch over and over. You know, like That's who the wild. fuck do would I have up there? George Lucas? No fucking way. You know, like uh. I, I don't I mean, know. Definitely not George Lucas. Right, exactly. Like, Tarantino's great. Yeah, no, no. Tarantino. Yeah. yeah, those two guys are way Nolan's up there. Nolan's fun. I like Nolan. Nolan uh, you know what? Nolan is definitely in my top five for yeah. sure. He's got a bunch of great movies. Yeah, no. I love Nolan's films from the Batman series to, you know, uh, Dunkirk. I started uh, with Inception. Memento. Yeah. But from Memento onward, I've loved everyone. Yeah. He doesn't make, he, he doesn't really make bad movies. Oh, so, not really. Uh, this has really gotten off of Nightmare. One last thing about Nightmare. Good, one. though. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah, is what exactly. Nightmare deserves. Exactly. It can fuck itself. <laughs> one last thing about Nightmare. Originally, when they were going to do Freddy Krueger, yeah. the first thing they were going to do was go with a gigantic dude. Because okay. that's what everybody was at the time. Of course, yeah. Kane Hodder was the first person that was that was talked about for uh, Freddy Krueger. Okay. Uh, if you don't know who that is, he is the most famous person for playing Jason. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, fun fact, he did play Freddy Krueger for a minute. Uh-huh. In one of the Jason movies, Jason goes to hell. Yeah. His mask drops, and then Freddy's hand comes up, grabs his mask, and pulls it under. That was actually Kane Hodder. Uh-huh. So he got to play at that time. Sure. He's very respectful to Robert England, though. He's like, you know what? I would have loved to play Freddy, but I could never have done what Robert England did. And sure. Like that. Okay. Kane Hodder is like 6'4", 300 pounds, just Jesus to kind of give you Christ. like an idea of what they were going for. Yeah. And then they were like, they reached out to Robert England, his, his agent did, and they were like, we want you to be able to play... I don't know if this is a compliment towards Robert England, yeah. but they were like, this guy plays a child molester. Like, this <laughs> guy can fuck? like play like a rat like because they yeah. wanted him to be like rat like and yeah. like, you know, like creepy and stuff. And then sure. they were like when they interviewed him and everything like that, yeah. they were like, this is what a child molester is. Jesus. Like, like not like if you look at the stories of people who have molested child, yeah. it's never some like big bodybuilder. No, no, no. Like those yeah, are like yeah. serial killers sometimes and stuff like that. It's, it's like always the like dudes. the creepy sort of like skinny, like, you know, like weird dudes and yeah, and sure. he's so good at playing that character which is weird that we are like is he still alive oh yeah yeah, yeah. he's actually there was actually talk about him being freddy krueger again in the, in the he was he was freddy krueger in some tv show they had like a tv show special and yeah. he was in that uh-huh. and he played freddy krueger in that i can't remember community or some bullshit like oh, okay that. So, sure yeah yeah but he uh they talked about bringing him back, and with and with special effects and all that shit. Now you could easily do that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like yeah. they de-age. Look at fucking Robert De Niro and yeah. the Irishman, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. like ridiculous. The it's Irishman like, is a clear example of what you can do with de-aging, right? Yeah. You know, it may, I was just thinking about this today again in the weeds because I thought with de-aging they should have. It's too bad that they didn't give fork over the money to Harrison Ford and have him play a young Han Solo. Yeah, you know, I mean, they could have de-aged Disney him. Disney had the money, right? Yeah. Exactly, they could have paid him whatever they wanted to, and then that movie could have been a billion dollar movie rather than fucking five five hundred million dollars. Yeah, you know, for right? sure. People would have got excited about that, but yeah. either way, but he was also pretty done with that character. Yeah, though. He, was yeah. Like, he kept wanting to die. The I, fact that I, I, wish, I really wish that uh, Disney would have been like, "How about we give you a hundred million dollars?" You're right. Like, fuck it, ten percent of what we're getting yeah, back. We'll give sure. you ten percent of whatever we get back. Yeah. And he's just like. Okay. Right. <laughs> really yeah, tempted yeah. Me, you know. Because like he did come back for Rise of Skywalker though, you know. So He was in Rise of Skywalker? Yeah, remember when uh Kylo gets stabbed and Leia dies and then he, he uh, has his little dream sequence on the on the ocean there and then he sh- and Han shows back. Oh up. yes. Oh my yeah. god. I totally Damn, agree. what a forgettable movie that is. <laughs> I just remembered that shit. Wow, that's so Oh funny. shit, yeah. Yeah, he uh yeah, that that movie uh I'm not going to say what I think of that movie, but I'm gonna say I didn't love Rise of Skywalker. I'll say that. I the sequel trilogy in general. That's a whole nother podcast for yeah. a real quick, maybe. Yeah, maybe uh, real quick. Maybe maybe another episode. But uh, you know, this is this is how bad this movie is. We are way fucking yeah. Bad. We talked about a lot of stuff that you're wasn't gonna, this movie. Unfortunately, you're, you have a heavy editing job. Uh, no, I'm leaving all the shit in. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you for listening to another very special episode, a Halloween episode of the Minorities Report podcast. Um, sorry? Yeah, sorry for it being very Shitty. not about the movie. Yeah. I, we're going to try not to watch bad movies. No, I'm kidding. Sometimes we're going to watch bad movies, so yep. just be ready for that. That's kind of kind of the draw to our podcast is <laughs> going back to these rose-colored you know, movies and seeing if they hold up or if they were just... A product of their time, and they just don't. And, the, and this, this one movie, is way a product. Of yeah, time. this one is one where it's just like, 
Yeah, not it wasn't even enjoyable to me, and I love horror movies. <laughs> so you know, unfortunately, but you know what? Uh, we're gonna we're gonna do some some better stuff coming up next. Yeah, we might do an extra episode this month uh, to make just up so for that this. we can. Yeah, to make one to make up for this, and two uh, that it might not be an old one. It right, might be a new one just so that we can do like an extra. Like a, maybe we'll maybe we'll drop one on Halloween. There you go. Yeah, I yeah, like that idea, cool. and that should be great. Uh, so you could tune in live as we go. Uh, li- Wait, what? we're not we're not doing anything live. All oh, right, I thought uh, we were live. Well, see see everybody next time. We're not doing a live episode. One, two, Freddy Freddy's coming for you. Three, four, better lock your door. Five, six, grab your crucifix. Seven, eight, gonna stay up late. Nine, ten, never sleep again.